You're watching America Trends. I'm Mary Burke Godwin chatting about cybersecurity with our cybersecurity expert, Brad Ramber. Welcome back. Uh, we love having you here. And we got some good tips for business owners in this next segment. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 10 steps to avoid mm -hmm. a cybersecurity breach. So we've talked about several of these, but there's some new things in here. And I always just think these, we can't hit these home enough, right? I mean, because some of these I still don't have, not I still haven't implemented and it's been two years. So I think that, you know, we should talk about some of these. Yeah, yeah. The first one, why don't you, you take us down this list? Well, the first one is, is to hire a cybersecurity professional who's had wins and losses. So Okay, that's a good one. So number one, hire a professional like yeah. yourself or somebody as smart as you who knows the ins and outs. But I like this second part, this caveat. The wins and losses? Yeah, not just a successful person. That a, a wise person once told me, good judgment comes from experience. Experience comes from bad judgment. Hey, so what we, comes first, the well, chicken or the egg? Yeah, exactly. Well, well, we all make mistakes, and so. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Yeah, so the, uh, what did we learn from the mistakes, whatever those are, right? So when I get in these conversations with my kiddo playing basketball, okay, what happened? How'd that go? What did you do? What would you have done to have made that turn out better? The, the, cybersecurity is very much that. Is, is the Romans developed the block substitution cipher and then somebody cracked it and, we, and here we are we're dealing with quantum computing now in, in theory or at least in articles. Mm -hmm. it's, it's important to know how you got better at it Mm -hmm. whatever it is and so cybersecurity is very much that it's it changes so rapidly there's so much to learn and know that yeah and it seems like if you're have any experience at all you're going to have a few losses because there's seem there's breaches and issues constantly yeah I, somebody pretended to be an old colleague of mine on facebook and reached out and i responded ah, and i went you fell for it I, there was no loss of data. Yeah, okay, good. There was no loss of money. I asked a very critical question, foolishly thinking, I actually responded, this is not the phone number. And I simply said, huh, when'd you move here? Because this isn't the phone number I have. Mm -hmm. Crickets. So, but still, I wrote back, I'm not smart, right? Yeah. I mean, I got a text the other day that said, hi, so-and-so, this is Anthony or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't reply and I deleted it because I thought they yeah. don't know who I am and they're just fishing for uh -huh. fishing with a pH yes. for information. Yeah. Yeah. And so I just don't even because it freaks me out now. What you've said is that they you don't even need to click sometimes if they can get into yeah. your phone. Can they do it through a text message with a link? that uh, The vector I hear for I've, what is that program called? Um Pegasus. Mm -hmm. I think it's through WhatsApp. So okay. it's about, it's, so think about it. So many people have social media applications on their phone. Yeah. Find a weakness in the application because it wasn't built securely and exploit that. That's what happened there. That's how the no click scenario works, to my understanding. The no click, right? Yeah, virtually everything else you have to click on something. So I'm still assuming that no click is everywhere. That's my, because it, I, it just freaks me out. I would say that's a healthy amount of paranoia. Okay, healthy fear. Yeah. Of clicking. Yeah, yeah. Healthy fear of clicking. Exactly. Yes, I do. Okay, next one on the list. Yeah, you got to have a password manager. So we've talked about this. So this one is closely coupled I'm, with your favorite four-letter word, MFA. Yes, I actually have used a password manager for many years. Mm -hmm. And I, I would like to get everyone on board with them because yeah. I think, because there's just too many passwords <clears throat> to manage. Yeah, the, the, the intersection of how the human works and how the computer works, a longer password makes it harder to crack and harder to remember. So where's the handoff between? Right, I because can you can't it. remember it. Yeah. So, but then this leads me though to what I emailed you is that LastPass, who I use, had a security. They were compromised. So I got something from LastPass who has everything, and I think that they are uncrackable. They were cracked. A breach notification. Is breached. What you got. Yeah. Yes. So, in that case, should I be going in and changing everything? Depends on what was compromised in the breach. So if it was your credentials and pa your user credentials uh, and passwords, yeah, you gotta rotate the credentials. But how would I know? It didn't say specifically what 
The what? breach is supposed to tell you what information left and what the risk to you is. So send it to me. I will read it. Okay. I'm not a customer of that particular platform. Okay. But I'll tell you what you need to do. All right. Sounds good. So then that leads segues into MFA. Yep. Because they have to steal your password and your phone and or your identity with your carrier to Multi make that work. Yeah. So that's a big deal. Yeah. So the next one is interesting because you want to shrink your company's attack surface. That's computer nerd for how many doors are open on your house or windows, right? How do you do that? So with, well, what, what, they're, what they're talking about, well, let's use the house analogy. Let's say you have a one-story house and it's 4,000 square feet and you've got 30 windows around it and five doors. Well, you want to bolt the door shut and give people fewer places to compromise the outside wall and get inside. So what are those windows and doors in the tech world? Um, that would be um, network addresses um, okay. that aren't protected by... Appropriate technologies, web application firewalls, uh, whitelists, uh, which are will allow particular IP traffic or from a particular geolocation. Okay. So geofencing whitelists. Um, and is this really specific to a, a office that has lots of computer terminals? Any organization that has a lot of computers running that could be accessed remotely. Any. Okay. Church, school, business, hospital, pick one. Okay. All of them. All right. Okay. Yeah. So what's um, what's remote browse isolation well you don't want anybody browsing in your system or any terminal sessions uh -huh. so there are pieces of software that can come in and uh, take control of your machine or you can share access yeah right so you just want to limit that to the absolute fewest people possible because let's say we, we hired somebody on your recommendation that yeah. is helping us with technology mm -hmm. uh -huh. and he was like oh i'll just come in remotely and figure it out on your terminal. So yep. he's someone I trust because, well, yeah. first of all, he was your recommendation. And also he's, you know, at the highest level mm -hmm. of trust in our, I mean, we yep. have to be able to trust him because mm -hmm. he has to control everything. Yep. But I wouldn't give it to Jason. Let's just <laughs> love you anyway. But no, no, not true. <laughs> so yeah, so the next one that is important is back up your data and okay. back it up in two different places. Okay. Yeah, because ransomware, oh, we just encrypted your data. Oh, that's cool. I've got a backup that's 20 minutes old. I'll just use that. Bye-bye. Oh, okay. Yeah. Always Back have it your up. data backed up. A couple of places. A couple of places, and mm -hmm. how often? Continuously. Continuously. All right. Continuously. Um, and ensure authorized users have access to endpoints. Yeah. Yeah. If you're running an Airbnb, you change the code on the door every time you get a new person to come in, because you don't want the last person to ever right. remember the code and walk into your place when they're not supposed to be there. Yeah. Simply put. So you're just... Yep. Constantly rotating. Everybody's got their own username and password. You don't have any accounts in there that have been there for a while and just forgot to clean them out. Yep. It's it's good hygiene, basically, is what that means. Okay, we've got just one more minute. The last one here is audit and update cloud-based email security suites to their latest release. We've talked about that, updating. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Always make sure everything's patched. In environments that I run, I have software that monitors state of patch level on all of the endpoints in my environment. So that's nerd for... Is your antivirus updated? Is your operating system I was system like, yeah, updated? can you explain the, patching? The, the vast majority of the operating system updates you take on your phone or on your computer are security. Okay. The big ones. Right. The, one, the front number. and Which I learned that from you because I would let a good six, couple months go by without updating. I don't do that anymore. No, 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 no. Not really. Okay. Thank Not really? Thank you for being here, Brad Ramber. Thank you for having <laughs> I probably me. probably should always. go through and check my security updates right yes, now. Yes, yes. Um, it's always a pleasure learning so much from you and hearing your music. We love that. Uh, thank you. Um, and thank you, everyone at home, for watching America Trends. We've got more on the show coming up right after this break. And you can find us on social media at America Trends TV on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Not TikTok. 